Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and it's time for Ask a Herbert Erpaderp. Again, already. I know right, it feels like there was one of these just last week. Let's get to some questions. That's what we're here for, I suppose. First, on Discord, which you should totally join, General Spade said, could you do a model of the week with the Ask a Herbert Erpaderp? This would mean you could choose a model from the miniatures text channel from the past week and show it on the video. Somebody else answered saying I feel like it would make it a competition and that's true. I think it would make things more competitive than they ever need to be and I have no interest in that. I guess some people do enjoy being all competitive about things but it really puts me off and I don't think I'm the only one. Models are a hobby for me and I guess everybody else and they're relaxing and competition isn't relaxing. Also, people have been posting some really good work and I would rather things be inclusive rather than competitive. I'd also find it kind of stressful and annoying to have to pick a favourite every week. Instead, what I think might be a better idea is just a sort of showcase, rather than a model of the week. I'll share the stuff that's been posted in the miniatures channel on the Discord. I guess if you don't want me to share your images, include a note when you post them. Since this will be the first time, I'll just go back to the beginning of the year and share what's been posted since then. I think I'll put it at the end of the video because why not? Ducking Tanker said, how many KV-2 turrets would you need to re-equip the Maginot line? 42. Exactly 42. A British Patriot said, will you ever play Men of War Assault Squad 2? I have, but I didn't really get into it. I ended up puttering around the introduction map or whatever it was called, with no idea what I was doing. I kind of expected that map would have some kind of guide or something, being called a introduction map, but there was no tutorial at all. It's obviously not the most simple and intuitive game. I don't really want my hand held throughout the entire game or anything, but some information on how to do the things that were being requested of me in the introduction map would have been nice. I don't want to sit reading tutorials, taking lessons and doing a bunch of research just to play a game. I have neither the time nor the inclination, and I've lost any enthusiasm to play that I might have had. I think it's a poor design to either have no tutorial or guide, especially when the game is more complex than walk forward, point, shoot, etc. I'm sure there's plenty of elitists that prefer that, keeps the casuals away or whatever. I don't think I want to play games with people like that. Also, the time I did spend playing didn't properly capture with OBS, so I didn't even get a video out of it. Smose said, what do you think about the SAS stuff being released by Warlord slash Bolt Action? Kind of indifferent, I guess. I did see them in the email they sent out and I thought they could be fun. I was kind of put off by the fact that they're resin and metal though. They're probably quite good for people who specifically want SAS assault sections and such. Myself, I'm fine just fielding regular infantry or my commandos as SAS guys if I want them. Punky Ryan, I think is what that name probably says. He asks, do you consider the French accent as sexy? No, not especially. I mean, really it's a context thing. Who is the accent coming from? What's the situation? I'm not really into guys, so I'm really unlikely to think, oh my, that French guy sounds so sexy, if that makes sense. I was talking to my friend about this and she said that the last time she heard a French accent it was a lecturer and she was mostly amused by how he said certain things. When I think French accents, I usually think either comical or arrogant. And I guess in general, I'm more inclined to find accents charming, interesting, or just plain amusing rather than sexy. On last week's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, Harry Robinson said, what exactly is primer and is it necessary to build a model? Also, what is gloss varnish? Good questions. I'm no paint surgeon, so my explanation might be a little bit non-technical but primer is a kind of paint that bonds well to whatever surface you're painting, be it resin or plastic or a car or whatever. It's basically to prepare the surface for your other paints. It allows them to adhere better and makes them more durable. Acrylic paints that you usually use for modeling don't really stick to plastic very well, or I guess resin or metal either. Primer adds a tooth, I've heard it described as, which will allow the subsequent coats of paint to adhere to the model nicely. There's always going to be somebody who says, Oh, I've never used primer and I've never had a problem, so primer is bad. Don't use it. And if they're happy, that's good. But I highly recommend priming, especially if you want to handle your models and not have the paint flake off. But as always, you should make up your own mind. 
I suppose if you really wanted to, you could do your own experiments. Paint a model half with primer and half without, and see if there are differences and if you like one way better than the other. Try rubbing the painted surfaces and see if one is damaged easier than the other. Gloss varnish is a clear paint that dries shiny. Simple enough. Sometimes you want a nice slick shiny surface, either just because that's the look you want or maybe for applying washes. It can also protect paint underneath it, within reason, and it's great for applying decals over. Fog of War said, So I am going dark for 4 or 5 months for tax reasons. When I get back, can we do a collaborative project between your channel and Fog of War? Comparative build reviews perhaps? I think it would be fun. Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea and I'm totally keen. I'm not really sure how a comparative build review would work, but that's for future us to work out, I suppose. Let me know when you're finished hiding from the taxman or whatever it is you're doing and we'll make something cool. Gmias Briida said, Are you already known in your local hobby shop? Not really, unless they don't want to tell me that they know who I am or something like that. I don't think I really go into any of the local hobby shops with enough regularity to be a regular, and I very rarely stick around to chat. That said, the staff are always friendly and they always say hello etc. That's not because of me or who I am or anything like that, they're just good at their jobs. MJC Vlogs said, Hey, what's the best tank scale, 15mm or 28mm? There isn't a best scale. That seems like a total non-committal safe answer, but it's true. I'm pretty sure people who insist that one scale is better than the other are just insecure and defensive about their own choices. Really, it's subjective. Do you have next to no space? 15mm might be better. Do you want bigger tanks that might have a bit more detail? 28mm would be better. Do you want to field big swarms of tanks? 15mm or even smaller scales would be better. Do you want display models? 28mm might be okay, but 135th scale is probably better. You could even ask what scale is common with your friends, with whom you might plan to game. If they're all using 28mm models, maybe 15mm isn't the best choice. I don't think either scale is inherently better than the other, and as you might be able to tell, my attitude is, why not both? And that's it for questions this week. Let's look at some models from the community. The photos might not be the highest quality, but that's fine. Like I said before, it's not a competition. Anyway, first, here's a Gundam from The Big Boy. A mobile Regin Lays? Or something? I don't really know much of anything about Gundam, it's not really my thing, but it seems like a few of you are into them, which is cool. I like the green colour. Then, Smoes posted these Cromwells. The larger of the two being a Tamiya 135th scale model which is awaiting decals. The smaller one is the Airfix 176 scale version. They look like they're chroming along very well. General Spade looks like he's been quite busy, and he's shared this Soviet Maxim machine gun team from Warlord, who look like they're ready to dispense many bullet at enemy. He's also done some terrain and it's already got guys lurking about in amongst the trees and bushes. The trees are a bit plasticky but it looks like a really good and effective piece of terrain. And he also shared these cinematic photos he took while gaming with a friend. That's a very nice looking KV2 and I really like the image of the guy standing on top of it shouting, presumably in victory or maybe just plain old rage, with the KV2 looking all dejected and sad. That tickles me right in the funny. The officer pointing and shouting is also quite entertaining. Looks like fun was had. Then from Broadstone56 we have this very very shooty man. This guy doesn't even pretend that he's here to chew gum. He's only here to kill. More. He looks like he's already done quite a bit of killing. That's really cool. When there was some discussion of mud, Chop shared some pictures of his A7V which he weathered using wet mud from the garden. It's not quite as muddy as I always imagine these tanks to be, but it's a pretty good idea. Though when using garden dirt I would suggest baking it in the oven to kill off anything that might be living in it. You never know. Plus then if somebody asks what you're cooking you can tell them dirt and ask if they want any. It'll be funny, I promise. And finally Ratto shared this SU-152. There's some interesting modulation in the green. I think it looks pretty good. It looks like a mighty and well used beast. Nicely weathered. I pity the fool that gets in the way of that gun. And that's it for this week. Thank you very much to those who've been posting in the miniatures section of the Discord server. And all of the other sections too really. 
I think it's really awesome to see what other people have been doing. I've been finding it pretty inspiring. It makes me want to get my ass into gear and paint my own stuff too. If you want to share your own modelling work or take part in the discussions, there's a link to the Discord server in the description below. There are basic rules that you'll probably see when you get there, mostly just don't be a dick and if you have criticisms, at least make them constructive. Everyone is welcome to share their work if they want, regardless of skill level. Speaking of welcome, I'd like to say a big welcome to the newest patron over on Patreon, William Ellsworth. Thanks for your support, William. It's truly appreciated, and I hope you enjoy your time with us. If you want to be excellent like William Ellsworth, you could start by heading over to patreon.com slash herbaderbaderb and becoming a patron. There are no cookies, I've eaten them all again, but there's other stuff. No pie either. Sorry. Anyway, that's enough from me. Time to go do whatever it is a herbaderbaderb does. As always, if you have any comments or questions you would like me to respond to on next week's Ask a Herbert Herbert Up, leave them in the comments section below or on Discord. I'll probably also see them on Facebook or the Tweety if that's more your thing. And of course, if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media, and watch me live stream on Twitch. Links to all of those things are in the description below. I shall return soon, so until then, stay awesome and thanks for watching. Farewell.